<laughs> All right. Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. What a match between Nigeria versus Cameroon. Lots to talk about in regards to Victor Osiman. First of all, congratulations to all the Nigerians out there to make it to the quarterfinals, I believe, against Angola. That's going to be a top game. Um, I did think about doing a watch along for this Nigeria versus Cameroon, but I just couldn't wake up. I'm absolutely tired, but I still ended up watching the match. Just didn't have enough energy to do a watch along. But glad I watched the match because it it allowed me to watch Osiman at a at a closer perspective. Obviously, you know, I don't want to make all the judgment based on one you know you know performance in the international level. You you should do your level best to watch Napoli as well on a week to week basis, which I will. But I have seen Napoli as well in the in, in the past, um, not as often as I probably wanted to, but this particular match against uh, Cameroon, one thing I want to say in regards to Victor Osiman, and, and before we actually do that, just quickly, ladies and gentlemen, the news coming from Sasha Tavalieri, I think he's a Belgian journalist, saying Chelsea FC, the chosen club for Victor Osiman. We were already talking about that case in June 2023. Look, this is this is not this is not something too out of uh, out of the box or too extraordinary. I think in recent times we've seen the link between Chelsea and this particular player. We've seen certain personnel in the likes of John Bibikel, uh, Didier Drogba pursuing uh, you know Victor Osimhen and wanting him to join Chelsea Football Club. And yeah, it, it, it seems quite plausible that this transaction may happen. And I think. One of the reasons why I suppose all of us are slowly calming down, but not not completely calming down. I think we need still need some sort of um, solution for this season in terms of a striker up front. We saw the issues against Aston Villa, but I guess you don't want to make any hasty decision and bring someone in when uh, I suppose the ultimate focus is in the summer to get someone like Victor Osimhen who right now is just totally impossible. Napoli, Man uh, Napoli president has also come out in recent times saying that Victor Osimhen will be leaving Napoli. So look, I have I have a good feeling that Osimhen will be joining Chelsea Football Club, but there's a lot of things that we need to fix up before he joins us. So we'll touch base on that uh, a, bit, a bit later on this particular video. But now in regards to his performance against Cameroon, I have to say like this particular player, Ossiman, this is a powerhouse of a player, man. He is an absolute powerhouse. Um, if whoever the manager is, and if it is Pochettino down, down the track, and we're going to touch base a little bit on Pochettino as well, uh, a little bit of news that's floating around. If it is Pochettino, he's absolutely going to cherish having a striker like Ossiman up front. One, he presses really well. There's just immense energy to cover a lot of ground. Se two, second thing is... He's a particular striker. He he relishes the opportunity to play in between two centre backs, and I think I would love to see Chelsea Football Club move back into that realm again. You know, back in the days, Didier Drogba, Diego Costa, play in between two defenders, be a menace. I feel someone like Osimhen will give immense trouble to to some of these defenders that that um, the Premier League has. I think they they will find Osimhen a handful. Physically, he's strong. Uh, his movement is excellent. He's, as I said, the, the pace that he has, he will trouble defenders in the Premier League. In this game against Cameroon, obviously Cameroon, they've made some basic mistakes as well. But at the same time, Osiman did catch them out. And Osiman absolutely cherished the moments fighting uh, against the two CBs. And, and this will give us a different outlook. There are times where if we are pinned back, we can go long and look for someone like Osiman who will absolutely love the fact that he he can um, you know he can he can sort of fight against two defenders, hold up the play, allow for the attackers to come in and then link up. And that's exactly what he did for the first goal for Nigeria, where he pressed, he won the ball um, off off the Cameroonian uh, defender, and then he slid in a nice pass for Lukman for uh, Lukman to finish and. All throughout the match, like, you know, after getting that goal, it made the situation quite easy for Nigeria to sort of sit back a little bit and look for the counter. Osiman was was a menace. Osiman was a proper, proper menace. He's a powerhouse, as I said. Um, and he was he was instrumental in the second half as well. A couple of really, really good moves in the second half, which should have led to goals. But overall, I think this is the type of quality I'd want. And I think 
with with a with a club like Chelsea, with the caliber of players that we have, um, I, I think someone like Ossiman, you know, being in between the two defenders, players like Enzo from deep can try and find him. Players out wide can whip in crosses, and he can be at the end of it. Um, and as I said, he'll be able to hold that ball up, you know, shrug off the defenders and bring in other attackers into the game, which is, which is, and, and this is something that we need to look at next season, bringing in, and I hope we do bring in Osiman or whoever it is, if it is Osiman's kind of caliber, I do think it is going to be Osiman. We do need to play to Osiman's strength. No point in having a striker up front and you don't want to change the way you want to play to suit that striker because at the end of the day, you are bringing this striker to score goals. So you might as well change the style of your play to suit Ossiman and his strength. So we do need to be direct at times. We need to be quicker. We can't be dilly-dallying around sideways passing whilst Ossiman is just getting, you know, just covered with many defenders. You've got to be able to release Ossiman quicker, utilize his pace so that he can actually trouble the defenders, right? Yes, he loves being in between the uh, defenders and he can whip in crosses and he'll definitely be up for a challenge. But at the same time, he does love you know, the, the ball coming into him directly and much quicker. So that's something that we do need to look into. And um, I think I think there's immense, immense quality in a player like Osimhen. And uh, it, will, it will be dynamic to have a player of his quality up front at Chelsea Football Club. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know. I'm very keen to see how Nigeria continues in this AFCON competition. They're into the quarterfinals. And my focus will definitely be on Victor Osimhen. But so far... I do like uh, the skill sets that he has and uh, it will fit. It will definitely fit Pochettino if Pochettino is still the manager of Chelsea Football Club. Now, next up, ladies and gentlemen, understand Chelsea have received at least two unsatisfactory offers for Armando Breuer this week from known unknown clubs, one dry loan and one permanent that was under valuation. Big few days to come. So, look, I think it's it's... It's quite straightforward at the moment that Armando Breuer just doesn't have any future at Chelsea Football Club. And, um, you know, some of his performances in recent times uh, don't seem to put a happy light uh, on the situation either. And I think Chelsea will be happy to uh, get that pure profit of Armando Breuer. Chelsea have rejected a proposal from Fulham for Armando Breuer. No counteroffer is expected as of now. But... I do expect this player to leave before the transfer window closes this particular uh, January window. Michael Elise completely open to joining Chelsea. His brother plays here. Blues put a lot of groundwork in on this already. Other clubs keen, but no decision even close from him and his reps yet. Chelsea all in for Olise. Now, there's been some news that's been circulating around that Olise to Man United, perhaps, is, is also a big uh, chance. Look, if we're going for Olise, Olise is a top player, man. It's the kind of winger that I want. I 100% I feel Olise is much more rounded and much more skillful than Madueke right now. Can Madueke be something like that in the future? I don't know. Maybe. But Olise, not only he has the ability to play on the right side, cut in, take players on, his dribbling ability is excellent as well. He's creative. He's so creative and he can score goals. Olise is far, far better rounded player, in my personal opinion, than Madueke. But, you know, bringing in a player like Olise, you know, you're sending out, a, I suppose, a message to the Chelsea squad, the current squad, some of the wingers that we have in the likes of Ali, uh, Madueke, in the likes of Mudrik, and maybe even Sterling, uh, to say that you know, someone, someone's definitely going to be in trouble if we do bring in someone like Olise. So let's see what happens. Um, I, I, I do feel we we need to revamp the, the wing areas a little bit for next season. We can't have, we can't have a player like Olise Victor Osiman lead the line for us, and then we don't have the adequate wingers to give him the service. He does need to get service, and I'm all okay for that. I don't care whether Osiman is a service type of uh, striker. I've, I've got no issues with that. That is not a slander. That is not a you know putting him down by any way. I like to have a striker that needs service because that's what the wingers should predominantly be doing. That's what the midfielders should you know they should be doing as well different strikers different policy i suppose right with Ossiman, you want to be able to give service so let's see what happens with alise <clears throat> down the track last but not least ladies and gentlemen Maurizio pochettino is currently in no danger of losing his job chelsea job but failure to qualify for europe could put him under pressure when his progress is reviewed at the end of the season coming from at law look 
now what level of Europe are we talking about? I don't think we're going to get Champions League. That's quite impossible, in my opinion. We've got some big games coming up. We can potentially make Conference League if we win the Carabao Cup. That's a straight up access to Europe. So that will potentially save Pochettino's, you know, Chelsea career, I suppose. Um, that is some level of Europe. Europa League is probably within our grasp. Uh, I think I think we're only a few points away from uh, being in the top six position. So it's really up to Pochettino. It's really up to the team. Pochettino in recent times has said that the team is starting to look a little bit more consistent as opposed to in the first half of the season where it was a bit up and down. Um, he feels that the performance is a little bit more consistent. We need to translate them into wins now. We've got a big game coming up against Liverpool up next. Emotions are going to be high, obviously, with Jurgen Klopp announcing that he's going to leave at the end of the season. We now have um, Xavi from uh, from Barcelona also coming out publicly and announcing that he's going to be leaving uh, the Barcelona spot. So lots of top clubs available for the managers. It's going to be a big window, summer window for the managers' transfers as well. So look, yeah, Europa League, I think, is within grasp. Um, Conference League, definitely, we, we, we should look to win. The Carabao Cup. You don't go to the final to to bow down to Liverpool, and I think we've bowed down to Liverpool a bit too much. And I don't really care one bit, you know, about emotions of Liverpool wanting to win everything possible for Jurgen Klopp. So let's see what happens with uh, Pochettino. But yeah, if you don't make it to Europe altogether, I think that might be a little bit disastrous. So let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of this particular trans. Uh, well, Chelsea news, transfer news, all of that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. Make sure you comment about everything you spoke about in the comment section. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, everyone, take care and see ya. Bye.